Now let's talk about the idol worshipers. That's what they. That's the number one complaint yes. against the Filipino people. Yes, yes. Filipino people leave the Catholic Church because they're accused of being idol worshipers. Hmm. We're not idol worshipers. If you ask somebody that's praying in front of a statue of Mary, are you worshiping Mary? No, we're not worshiping Mary. So let's say this, Exodus chapter 20. God says, don't make any images of anything above the earth, on the earth, or below the earth, and bow down and worship them. Brother Steve, uh, what can you say about those um, people who always... Uh, criticize our Catholic faith that we are a idol worshiper and Catholics will go to hell. <laughs> well, first of all, I would tell them they, sh they should stop being foolish and ignorant and they ought to learn what they're talking about before they talk about it. Mm. There's a lot of people that criticize the United States and our country, but that's because they've never studied the Constitution. They never studied our history. They don't know what it is they're criticizing. Most of the people leave the Catholic Church without ever studying it to really find out what it is they're leaving before they leave it. Mm. <clears throat> and so they, I would say to those people, you should really learn what the Catholic Church is before you criticize it. And before you leave it, simple as that. The Catholic Church is a beautiful thing. It's been here for 2,000 years. It's been through every city. It, has, it is what has created hospitals and the whole medical world. It's what started universities. It's what the most beautiful forms of music and art have come out of Christianity, not out of other religions, not out of Hinduism or Buddhism or Islam. It's come out of Christianity. That's where the most beautiful music and art and culture and hospitals and universities and all of the things that we take for granted in the West. Those all came out of the Christian worldview, namely the, the Catholic worldview. Does that answer that question? Yes. What advice can you give to our non-Catholic brothers and sisters who always criticize our Catholic teaching? Before they criticize, learn. There's an old saying here, open mouth, insert foot. In other words, people put their foot in their mouth means that they made a fool of themselves because they speak before they think. And most people criticize the Catholic Church without having ever learned what it really teaches. They've read anti-Catholic books. They've talked to... Here's an example. I told you I've been to the Holy Land about 200 mm -hmm. times. What if I was going to write a book about the Jews and I only interview... Palestinian Muslims. Hmm. How good is my book on the Jews going to be? It's going to be very biased. It's going to be dishonest. What if I'm a Christian and I only listen to Protestant sources? I never read Catholic books or let the Catholic Church speak for itself. I only read Protestant books against the Catholic Church. How much am I going to really know about the Catholic Church? Very little. And it's all going to be biased and jaded. So I would say to people, before you criticize the Catholic Church, take some time to study what it is. Find out that it is very biblical. Now let's talk about the idol worshipers. That's what they. That's the number one complaint yes. against the Filipino people. Yes, yes. Filipino people leave the Catholic Church because they're accused of being idol worshipers. Hmm. We're not idol worshipers. If you ask somebody that's praying in front of a statue of Mary, are you worshiping Mary? No, we're not worshiping Mary. So let's say this, Exodus chapter 20. God says, don't make any images of anything above the earth, on the earth, or below the earth, and bow down and worship them. Five chapters later, God forgot what he said. <laughs> he told them to make an Ark of the Covenant and mm. to make golden cherubim that are on the Ark of the Covenant. Golden cherubim? That's something above the earth, isn't it? It's angels, and they're to make out of graven gold, graven images of gold, angels, and put it on the Ark of the Covenant. He just told them five chapters earlier never to do that. Now he's telling you, oh, break my law. Go ahead. It's okay this one time. And then they make the curtains around the tabernacle, and they have to sew pomegranates into them, beautiful pomegranate plants. But he also said, don't make any images of anything on the earth. Now they're making pomegranates and bulls, images. And then 
they fall into sin because they're grumbling against God and the snakes are biting them. And he says, make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. Not only are they to make a bronze image, a serpent, an image, but they will be saved by looking at the image. Wow. So what is God doing? Is he very confused? No, the point is God is making is that all of the nations around you do not worship the true and living God. They worship gods made out of stone and wood and metal. These are not gods. You take half the wood and you burn it in the fire. You take the other half of the wood and you turn it into a god. What kind of a god is that? So what the Bible, what Jesus, what God is saying is that you don't bow down and worship idols. The Catholic Church does not have idols. God broke his own law in a sense because it says in Corinthians in the book of Colossians that Jesus Christ, God sent his son, who is the visible image of the invisible God. God himself made an image of himself and gave it to us. Who is that? Jesus Christ. He is the visible image of the invisible God. Wow. And from that point on, because Jesus came down as an image, the church has always said we can have, oh, and even the Protestant who says this, Adrian, has a picture of their mother and father on the wall. And that yes. picture of their mother and father on the wall is an image. If they're going to be consistent, they ought to take down every picture they have in their house, get every picture out of their wallet in their pocket of their mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and their babies and throw them all away because those are images. And if they have these pictures on the wall, they're violating that command that they have yeah. these images. So the problem yeah. is, is that those people who are accusing Catholics of worshiping idols have no idea what they're talking about. Catholics worship the Trinity alone. We venerate and honor Mary and the saints, just like I love and honor my mother. How do we know that a Marian apparition is of pre-natural or supernatural origin because of many people who are now saying Mama Mary is uh, appearing to them? Yeah. Well, first of all, for every authentic Marian apparition, there's, there's probably one or two dozen that are not. The devil kind of, uh, or the person's own imagination, you know. Para magkaroon ka ng access sa content na ito, be part of my Patreon group at i-click mo lang ang gold membership. Ma-access mo na ang buong video talk na ito. Alam mo ba na pag ikaw ay naging part ng aking Patreon group ay matutulungan mo ako makapag-produce pa ng mga high quality content na katulad ng pinapanood mo ngayon at sobrang makakatulong ito sa ating online evangelization dito sa ministry na ginagawa natin para mas ma-empower nyo kung makapag-produce ng mas marami pang content na alam ko na makakatulong sa inyong pananampalatayang katoliko. Thank you and God bless. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope na na-bless at na-inspire ka dito sa aking vlog. Make sure na i-like mo at mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to. At mag-subscribe ka sa aking YouTube channel para lagi ka updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. At huwag mo din kakalimutan na i-like ang aking page. So this been Adrian Milag encouraging you to live your life to the fullest. God bless you more abundantly.